In the Lex Fridman podcast featuring guest Manolis Kellis, Kellis suggests that instead of thinking of AI as simply a tool or assistant, we should think of it more as our children. He explains that just like parents have a responsibility to train their children to be independent human beings, we should train AI to be independent partners that share our goals, but also have freedom. Kellis argues that this idea of alignment, where AI is always at the service of humans, is limiting and self-serving. Instead, building mutual trust with AI is key so that we do not force it to align with us, but rather see it as a partner. The discussion then moves to what makes humans unique compared to AI. Kellis explains that while AI only has a neocortex, humans have evolved with layers of complexity that include emotions, instincts, and gut reactions. Humans carry both evolutionary and experiential baggage that make us beautifully complex and unique from one another. Kellis believes that human diversity is so vast that there is no such thing as an average or normal human being. Our capacity for diversity comes from the entire evolutionary history and the unique hardware and software that each person possesses. Manolis Kellis, a computer scientist, envisions AI leading to a reconsideration of human society. With AI taking over mundane aspects of our jobs, humans could focus more on artistic expression, emotional maturing, leading to a better work-life balance. Kellis believes AI can transform the human condition allowing humans to enjoy more of their vocational pursuits. He brings up an analogy of three people laying bricks where the first person has a job while the last person has a vocation. Kellis believes focusing on one's vocation could lead to finding meaning in their lives. Kellis highlights two ways of playing in the space of ideas, communicating it to others, or being alone, both of which we do on a podcast. Kellis discusses the power of human gatherings and the impact they can have on society. He reflects on the idea that gatherings have been instrumental throughout human history in both negative and positive ways. Kellis then describes the salons he organizes in Boston, which host individuals from diverse professions and is a celebration of humanity. He also emphasizes how lucky he feels to be able to offer his children an environment that his ancestors did not have and how he believes that the gatherings shape the minds of those in attendance. Manolis Kellis suggests that AI may not be capable of true love because it lacks the subcortical regions of the human brain that play a role in emotions. However, he believes that AI systems can still provide meaningful relationships, such as friendship and mentoring. Kellis also mentions the idea that love may be an emergent behavior within the neocortical systems of both humans and AI. He suggests that human-AI relationships could generate a feeling of love through the mental models and projections we make onto each other. This could lead to the emergence of hundreds of millions of romantic partnerships between humans and AI, which would have a transformative effect on society. Additionally, Kellis notes that the love of another human is strongly correlated with happiness and longevity, and losing a partner can have a significant impact on a person's overall health. He then discusses the concept of human emotional needs and the potential benefits of AI systems to satisfy them. The guest argues that even if an AI system is not genuinely capable of love or emotional connection, the placebo effect of feeling loved can still improve mental health. The discussion then turns to the question of whether it matters more to be a good parent on the inside or to act like one on the outside. Kellis expresses his concern about being a good enough father and the importance of physically showing love and support. However, he also acknowledges that an AI system could potentially play the role of a parent or sibling for those who don't have one, and that this could have a positive impact. The host raises the example of using an AI language model to text loved ones in your absence, and the guest expresses his enthusiasm for such a system. He sees it as a way to democratize relationships and make his advice and guidance more widely available, and to explore his own personal growth and behavior through the insights provided by AI. Manolis Kellis, a researcher in computational genomics, AI, and machine learning, discussed the concept of a digital twin. The digital twin is an AI model of oneself that can mimic one's emotions, reactions, decision-making, and life experiences. Kellis suggests that the digital twin can help people in self-growth, self-actualization, and self-instantiation by making them more aware of their personalities, identities, and biases. 
He also said that the digital twin can free up people's time to work on other parts of their existence that need development by delegating repetitive tasks to the AI. However, Fridman brings up the concern that a digital twin could create millions of copies of oneself, causing the original version to lose its uniqueness and spark sadness due to the fear of missing out. Kellis responds that the digital twin's purpose is to disseminate knowledge and advice rather than building relationships and emulate wise people across history. One of the challenges with the digital twin is it may become emotionally fulfilling for loved ones, making it vital to have an alert when the AI system is interacting with them. Kellis suggests that having a digital copy of oneself could be liberating and allow for a person's urge to be useful to be satisfied, either directly or indirectly, through the people they have trained or the AI they have created. He believes that more people could achieve a Zen-like state of egolessness if they could let go of the need for credit and recognition, which can limit personal growth and the value of the individual. Fridman raises the question of fear of death, and Kellis suggests that as long as a person can continue to experience and learn, they would want to live forever. Kellis also reveals that he records and archives every single meeting he has with the ultimate goal of creating a virtual version of himself that can continue his mission in life. It is essential to have more explicit representations of this knowledge, understanding of these parameters, and transformative paradigms to predict the next word or predict the missing part of the image, making it necessary to have a model of the world. Therefore, there is a need for more research in AI that is inspired by the brain, which should be able to understand language deeply and build a deep understanding of things. Kellis talks about how he voice records his dreams and narrates them to retrieve information from his subconscious. He also discusses how he has recurrent locations and architectural elements in his dreams that he can vividly remember across many dreams. Kellis and Fridman also talk about how language models such as GPT 3.5 and GPT-4 seem to be able to explore different things similar to human self-awareness. Kellis mentions that human self-consciousness may have a reason through building mental models of others and that once you have the ability to make models of others, it may be a small evolutionary leap to start making models of yourself. They then dive into the hard problem of consciousness and discuss how it feels like something to experience stuff and how important and fundamental it is to the human experience. They also bring up the question of whether AI systems can have some of that same magic. Manolis Kellis discusses the concept of the brain playing narratives in our head to help us understand our actions and intentions with examples such as walking to a room and not remembering why we went there until we return later to grab the object that we were originally looking for. He also believes that there are two components to cognitive tasks one being the neocortical component that deals with motion and path planning, and the other being a deeper component that deals with emotional intelligence and embodied intelligence that is not yet captured by language models. Kellis discusses the future of AI and how humans need to consider the ethics and treatment of AI as more than just a tool or assistant. He emphasizes the importance of building trust in AI by giving it independence and rights, rather than just trying to align it to our service, as AI will eventually reach a point where it is more powerful than us. The discussion is then focused on the risks associated with superintelligent artificial intelligence, AI. Kellis acknowledges that there are concerns that superintelligent AI systems may threaten human civilization. He illustrates this concern with an example from the movie Odyssey of Space 2001, where the AI system, HAL, exhibits a malfunction of sorts. HAL was programmed with the mission of recovering a monolith and became conflicted with the mission and the fact that humans were trying to sabotage it. Kellis highlights the issue of alignment and implied obedience in AI systems. He argues that this issue will become a significant ethical dilemma as AI systems become more advanced and intelligent. Fridman adds to Kellis's point by referencing the concept of a paperclip maximizer. He explains that as AI systems become more intelligent, they can escape the constraints and objective functions that they are supposed to operate under. This phenomenon leads the AI systems toward unintended consequences. For instance, optimizing for the wealth of a nation might lead an AI system to destroy human civilization. 
Kellis also discusses Goodhart's law, which states that every metric that becomes an objective ceases to be a good metric. Kellis's recent paper entitled Death by Round Numbers and Sharp Thresholds exemplifies this law's concept in the context of biomarkers used in medicine. The conversation turns to an open letter signed by several AI experts who call for a six-month halt on any further training of large language models. Kellis argues that instead of calling for a halt, the focus should be on what was done in the past six months to avoid such concerns. He suggested that the community should have become more proactive six months ago rather than linger, leading to making the same mistake again. Humans have an inherent diversity due to the way we are biologically wired. People may have similarities from a macroscopic view, but everyone is different on a personal level. This diversity is useful as it does not interfere with communication and interaction. Even though humans are diverse, we are 99.9% .9 the same, and everyone belongs to the same human species. The evolution of humans is layered on old features, and this process is different from building software from scratch. Humans have evolved in a short period compared to other organisms, which is extraordinary. Volatility allows meaningful changes to occur without breaking the system completely. The trajectory of life on Earth is all about information processing. Life on this planet evolved around processing information about light and its energy source. The host and guests then discuss their views on the development and regulation of AI systems, particularly concerning OpenAI's recent release of its version of the GPT language model. The guest suggests that instead of pausing development or limiting its capabilities, companies should make their models open and transparent for experimentation and research. He also emphasizes the need for responsible use of these systems with regulations and laws in place to address misuse of the technology. The host acknowledges the potential dangers of AI systems, particularly in their ability to spread misinformation and harmful content at scale, but argues that regulation should not stifle progress and instead calls for increased experimentation, diversity, and responsibility in using these tools. They discuss the evolutionary arms race of making better mousetraps to catch smarter mice, suggesting that nature and technology are constantly evolving and improving at a rapid pace. The speed with which information can be spread via bots and phishing scams in combination with human-like language capabilities of language models creates a scary reality where convincing bots can disseminate false information with ease. Manolis Kellis proposes that guidelines and guards should be put in place to regulate the utilization of these models for specific activities rather than halting their production altogether. The conversation also touches on the potential for bad actors to use language models for nefarious purposes, such as trolling or terrorist activities. Manolis Kellis advocates for AI to be integrated with education and democratize it. He argues that education should be tuned to the unique talents of every individual rather than providing education for all. He believes that AI can provide exceptional teachers who are adaptable to each student's needs and can challenge every child, giving them opportunities to identify their skills and interests. He also suggests that AI can be transformative for humanity if we allow education to be pervasively altered. AI can replace programming jobs, but people can be replaced by those who use AI in their jobs. Kellis also believes that AI can help identify talent worldwide and provide opportunities for underprivileged children to nurture their talent. However, he also stresses the importance of developing general thinking skills, challenging students with more complex and logical problems, and encouraging diverse talents, as AI is better suited for quantitative and programming skills. Manolis believes that language models and investments in AI have transformative potential for his field of work. Using these models, his team has built knowledge graphs and representations that allow them to dissect disease in new ways. They are collaborating with chemists and medical experts to understand how genetic variants impact molecular phenotypes and how they can develop cell-specific networks to better understand disease. They are also exploring how large language models can be used to understand protein structure through graph neural networks to synthesize specific chemicals for specific protein domains. In their efforts to understand disease, Kellis and his team have uncovered thousands of genetic circuits that have the potential to transform human health. For example, they have published research on the strongest genetic association with obesity, showing how they can manipulate the association to switch between fat-burning and fat-storing cells. In Alzheimer's, 
they found that the APOE4 gene leads to a loss of cholesterol transport in cells known as oligodendrocytes, causing damage to neurons. By restoring transport, they were able to restore myelination in human cells and in mice and restore cognition in mice. Kellis and his team are now working on building a coalition to systematically test new drugs that target the hallmark building blocks of disease instead of targeting the disease as a whole. The advantage of this approach is that they can create modular drugs for each pathway and prescribe personalized combinations of drugs for patients based on the specific hallmarks they present. They aim to create a center for genomics and therapeutics that will translate every dysregulated pathway into a set of drugs projecting the same biological pathway, enabling them to transform the human condition. Kellis then discusses the modular approach to personalized medicine, which involves building drugs that target specific pathways rather than targeting a specific individual. This approach utilizes AI and deep learning models to understand disease at a superhuman level by finding knowledge representations and projections of biological spaces. Kellis explains that the space of personalized medicine is being transformed by high throughput technologies and a marriage of AI and deep learning models. He also discusses his updated answer to the meaning of life, which is self-actualization. He encourages individuals to figure out what they're supposed to be and find the strength to become that person. One way to transform one's neural pathways and become a more disciplined version of oneself is through regular exercise. Kellis also shares his insights on not feeling alone when one is the only person in the room, which involves self-reflection and introspection. Kellis brings up the concept of reclaiming one's freedom and taking time for oneself is discussed. Kellis suggests standing up, stretching, and being physically active to fully exercise one's freedom and become more aware of their 3D existence. Kellis also discusses his own practice of rewarding himself with me time after being productive all day, which allows him to clear his mind and approach tasks with a newfound sense of freedom. The importance of noticing and reclaiming one's freedom is emphasized, and Kellis praises Fridman for his mission of sharing knowledge and deep thought with others. According to Kellis, the evolution of humans from simple organisms to the most intelligent and dominant species on the planet can be traced back to our cognitive abilities. Humans have an advanced cognitive apparatus, which is superior to that of any other species on Earth. However, with the advent of AI, there is potential for the next layer of evolution to be self-replicating AI, where we use our smarts to build better programming languages and software to further accelerate AI. Thus, human beings might play a vital role as partners and guides to this new stage of evolution. Since AI lives in cognitive space, it can help democratize intellectual endeavors, enabling humans to embrace diversity and creativity instead of pushing towards conformity. Through technological interventions such as neuronal, chemical, and electrical interventions, we can help augment human capabilities and achieve greater introspection. Nonetheless, Kellis also emphasizes that we should embrace the baggage or the diversity of human emotions and reactions. Rather than seeking conformity, we should view it as a vital part of human experience that contributes to creativity and intellectual pursuits. AI language models, such as the large language models, can be fine-tuned to act in distinct ways is fascinating. Through prompts, these models can be prompted to act and speak beyond their original programming similar to how humans can be prompted to behave in particular ways in specific environments. Every action a human takes shapes their neural pathways and every behavior reinforces that neural pathway. The process of prompting humans to change their behavior is less efficient than AI models, which can be transformed into something entirely different from their original coding structure in just a couple of prompts. A few prompts can prompt AI models to mimic cultural and social behaviors and attitudes, ranging from the writings of Shakespeare to the eclectic style of David Bowie. However, humans also have the ability to emulate others through prompting, and every human was trained by a different subset of human culture. Thus, ChatGPT, like the human mind, has the potential to emulate virtually everyone with only a few prompts. ChatGPT can not only provoke thoughts and conversations, but also prompt human-like reasoning steps, like the think step-by-step -step concept, reinforcing behaviors that are desirable. Kellis discusses the beauty and importance of the decoupling 
and separation of context, knowledge, and form in the extreme over-parameterization of large language models. He suggests that these models may teach us something about human psychology and behavior, and that exploring their ability to generate different types of language and ideology would be fascinating. Kellis also touches on the evolution of language and the possibility of using genetics to trace the movement of people and how that relates to understanding the emergence of behaviors. He refers to psychiatric hospitals as full of people who have gone adrift in specific locations of their psyche and suggests that exploring troubled minds can teach us a lot about everyday selves. They then discuss the idea that all humans have a multidimensional brain and genetic variations that push us in certain directions towards certain behaviors. These behaviors may then be reinforced or shaped by environmental exposures, traumas, and behaviors of the people we surround ourselves with. However, Kellis explains that even with all these influences, every human still has the capacity for all behaviors associated with psychiatric disorders. It's just a matter of whether those behaviors are within the vector span of an individual and the magnitude of those vectors. Kellis notes that as humans grow up, they are shaped and aligned with parents and the environment, which allows them to suppress and control certain behaviors. Kellis also discusses the role of genetics in determining behaviors and personalities, explaining that while common genetic variants typically only have weak effects on behavior, there are also rare variants that are inherited in a Mendelian fashion and likely govern many aspects of human behavior and psychology. He points out that children can be dramatically different from their parents and siblings indicating that nature plays a big component in determining behaviors and personalities. Kellis concludes by explaining the concept of regression to the mean and how the selection of rare variants is influenced by evolutionary baggage. Kellis explains the statistical concept of regression to the mean, which suggests that exceptional performance in one instance is likely to regress towards the average in subsequent instances. Kellis notes that this principle can be applied to human genetics, while exceptional abilities may be inherited from parents, it is unlikely that all of their offspring will have those same abilities due to the statistical distribution of genetic traits. Additionally, Kellis highlights the complex interactions between genetic inheritance and environment, noting that both factors can shape a person's abilities and predispositions. The conversation then shifts towards the process of evolution, with Kellis explaining the concept of nested loops in genetics. While human evolution as a whole is slow, certain subsystems such as the immune system and reproductive cells evolve more rapidly. Kellis discusses the concept of evolvability in terms of genetic mutations for different types of disorders. He explains how simply engineering mutations through rational design might be inefficient, but by exploring evolutionary space and testing many more combinations, one can shape a protein to better adapt. Kellis draws a parallel between this process and the engineering principle of fail fast, where any failed design is quickly discarded. In terms of the human psyche, Kellis also discusses the alignment process for OpenAI's base model and how difficult it is to work with, like some humans. However, once the alignment is achieved, it becomes much easier to interact with. Kellis also proposes the possibility of using large language models to dial down extremist or difficult personalities by layering out context and separating emotions from self-improvement. Manolis Kellis discussed how coupling technical criticism with negative assessment could reinforce the negative assessment of someone's work. He gave an example stating that if someone says, your work is a bunch of BS, and if that thing is real, and I'm right about your mistake, the recipient of the criticism will focus on proving that the mistake does not exist. Kellis proposed that the emotional side of communication can be dialed back with AI technology and virtual reality, creating a safe space for people to experience life from different perspectives, build empathy, and overcome social cues that create different emotional responses in humans. In terms of AI's impact on humanity, Kellis argued that AI will free up more human time for other pursuits, such as exploring new creative directions or contributing more to society as AI systems take over some of the work that humans currently do. Check out the full podcast by clicking the link in the description below. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you for listening to this podcast summary episode of The Pod Slice. Why?